So yeah, while social <laughs> media may have impacted each of the artists on the panel in a different way, we were curious to find out if they have found larger trends in the industry. So we asked them the question, what do you think are the positive or negative impacts of social media on the industry? In regards to the industry, I think there's some good things as well, like people get jobs through it. Uh, a lot of people share work uh, with each other. They make friends, they build contacts. Again, I think all that part is wonderful. What I'm more hesitant about is the younger artists, the students out there. And since these platforms are designed to be addicting and they are designed to fragment our attention, constantly stimulate it, disperse it over numerous platforms, it's going to break your focus. And that's what particularly younger people need to do. They need to be mindful of a lot of us looks at the thumbs up, the likes, the hearts, and we conflate that with a sense of value. So that if somebody's putting a selfie up there, it's getting 20, 21,000 likes, and you work hard all week, and you're getting like 100 likes, maybe even less, you know, that can make us as artists feel absolutely terrible. And if you don't know how to kind of manage that and uh, handle that properly, it can be very detrimental to an artist's growth. But in a sense, like my friend Adam Dove says, it impacts our rhythm, our tempo as artists. We all kind of create, we learn, we produce, and we concentrate all at very different, very individual levels. Social media does try to influence not only the quality of our work, but the quantity of that content as well. It just wants us to produce, produce, produce. Rather than putting a slow and thoughtful pieces of work where you take your time, you work through it, they're more so concerned about how often you're posting. We see them as platforms to promote, promote ourselves and to build our followings from, but in reality, right, th these companies are designed to make an, uh, a profit off of us, and it always does work in their favor. So for a young person that's losing focus, that's just kind of copying trends out there, if it's them trying to work faster or you know not utilizing the creative design process in a functional sort of way, because they want to jump to photo bashing or do fancy fancy 3D while neglecting color and light. In a sense, it basically is damaging to their growth. And when that tempo is interrupted, just think of it like you're being forced to date someone that you're not entirely compatible with. Because when you are synced up, when you are in your element, when you are focused, when an artist is focused, their work, our work, is so much more pure, it's so much more genuine, it's more thoughtful thought-provoking even. It's really the same as doing any technical skill, distraction-free. It just comes out so much more natural. So I definitely recommend for lots of my students at least to put more thoughts into their individual brush marks, into their ideas, and to definitely slow down. Don't be distracted by the blips, the alerts, the likes, by trying to cater or pander to some audience on a social media. I think the industry gets to have more intimate knowledge of people's interests and it's easier to get updated with market audience. I see more official accounts nowadays being interactive with their audience through social media and it's like another form of customer service but more casual. But the downsides of social media on the industry is obviously the toxic communities, especially fandoms with big audiences. It's just inevitable, especially those who feel entitled to directly demand content from the official accounts. My bullet point would be visibility. People can find your work easily online, given that you have good work, people flock to good work, so that's a given. Second one, community. You can easily get feedback from other people regarding your work. There's that feeling of belonging because you know you're not the only one on that struggle. For the negative, it would also stem from community because some people just like to throw shade at other people's work without offering constructive criticism. So you can't really like say the community is perfect, but it could be better I suppose in that regard. I'm going to treat the word industry as describing the artists working within it rather than the welfare of the, the companies or studios. For artists, social media becomes the place that you can post your personal work, basically anything that you don't do um, in your job. And I imagine that the result of this is that a lot of artists that maybe fell out of uh, regularly creating their own personal work are actually getting a bit more inspired by other people who are doing their own to get back into doing so. 
and for artists that are working freelance obviously it's just a massive benefit because it's um, the way to be seen by potential clients as far as negatives go i can only really see that the dilution of creativity as uh, amongst artists as a whole would be the only real drawback if people are trying to chase likes chase uh, numbers rather than their own uh, creative ambitions but honestly it feels like most artists really aren't just trying to get likes with their artwork most subject matters are just very fun to paint um, who doesn't want to draw cute girls in medieval armor it works and it's it's entertaining for artist and consumer yes thomas who doesn't want to draw cute girls but that is actually a really interesting point that he brings up well of course uh, the other artists have made a lot of great ones as well and we'll eventually get to it but i do think that sometimes it becomes a little bit difficult to know your inner voice because when you're exposed to so many different kinds of artworks you don't know if what you're doing is because you do it because it's popular or you enjoy or it's popular because it's something that everyone just innately loves doing and i think that for that reason a lot of people love to draw like thomas said cute girls medieval knights and <laughs> you know, just fan- fantasy and all of those things which tends to be much more popular on art station let's just say than uh, more technical hard surface designs <laughs> i mean, I mean- <laughs> and yen harry not, says not- i want to draw cute vegetables and get some likes Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean not even technical stuff. Uh sorry, not even technical hard surface stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just Oh, well, that's uh, just one of the examples that just came to my mind. Yeah. I mean people just tend to flock to things that are a bit more sexy and eye catching in a way. Mhm. I mean it, it I mean that, wouldn't blame I them. I mean just I, look I at I your it, art station likes page Ken. All of it is just full of cute girls in medieval armor and some with less know? clothes than that too <laughs> i check i check your art station page can on a daily basis you should mm, know that by interesting now. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> in any case um i think uh, a lot of the the artists mentioned about the negatives being like the the toxic community and the dilution of creativity because people just get distracted with um the trend and also mm-hmm. uh about the toxic community they tend to demand more contents from the creators but yeah there's that sense that of entitlement that Rika touched exactly on in the her sense response. of entitlement yeah that's a good way of saying it maybe okay. that's because um uh, we're not uh when we're chatting through like a, a chat like this or like through an image board or whatever we don't really see the person behind the name the internet mm-hmm. name so it feels like we're not talking to a real person so that kind of disconnects us from the other people right mm-hmm. and it just makes us makes it easier to uh, spew words of hate or negativity yeah there's that disconnect just, pretty much you don't mm-hmm really see that person face to face and i think it would be different when you had to say exactly the same words that you're saying to someone when you see them yeah. directly yeah. i think people tend to be a lot nicer when they they're talking to other people face to face and not as willing to say anything negative because one of the consequences depending on the person might be that that person will respond to your negative comment with you know a fist to the face let's just say whereas with <laughs> behind the keyboard you might be safe behind the keyboard everyone's a yeah. warrior exactly <laughs> <laughs> but i also do think it's because um to a certain extent everything's become so available right now and there's so many choices mm. online that it's easy for consumers and i do think that's what audiences of artwork are they're consumers in a way and i think it's easy mm. to f- feel like with so many options out there that companies or creators try to appeal to or even placate to certain consumers out there and maybe that kind of behavior has bled onto even smaller creators as well 
where they feel that it's the creator's small creator's job to entertain and abide by the adage of the customer is always right. I mean, I don't know if you guys in the chat agree with that, but yeah, do let us know what you think. Or even with the bigger question of what do you think the positive and negative impact social media has on the industry? We love to hear you guys what you think. I think um, speaking of uh, like smaller artists, it's I think social media is especially useful for them and also for us. For example, uh, mm-hmm. us living in Indonesia because. Mm-hmm. We're so far away from the center of the entertainment industry, and with social media, we're kind of able to close the gap a little bit because we can get discovered by art directors or producers or whatever from the other side of the world. And social media also exposes us to a multitude of different artists from different mm-hmm. countries, and in some in a lot of way, it in I think if you take the positivity, just the positivity, you'll get a lot of inspiration, and in turn, it will help you create better artwork for yourself. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Jordan? Yeah, uh, I definitely agree. But even then, with that kind of positivity, you might be you might feel that obligation to keep that up because if you're only getting a lot of positivity, let's just say for drawing a certain subject matter, what if you started yeah. doing something else and you stopped getting that positivity or less of it? That might actually make you reconsider your choices. And that's exactly what I think Tyler was talking about where it can really damage damage the growth of a young artist when they feel that mm. what they're doing uh, is not in alignment with what the industry or what people as a wider audience tends to like. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I guess like we said previously, it all comes down to the individuals, where they should learn how mm-hmm. to manage their own emotion and, like Tyler sl- said, slow down and yeah, uh, just focus on your own work instead of yeah, finding your own rhythm. People. What works for you. And maybe how often uploading is or how often you should finish a personal work. It's a very individual thing. And we shouldn't try to keep up with someone else that has a different lifestyle than us. And and just to read out some of the comments that we've uh, had typed up in the chat. And Jen Loop says, Seeing so many other artists doing their own thing online has given me more confidence to pursue my own style, even if it is a bit weird and playful and that's Mm. i think a really great lesson to actually take from social media because Mm. someone else might actually uh, come away from that with a negative mindset because they might feel that Mm. how come my how come my what i'm doing isn't as well received as someone else's or maybe they might Mm. feel that Mm-hmm. I guess their stuff think, is so different from the wider industry trends that they're discouraged from that. I think nowadays with social media, uh, it's it's easier to find your niche community, like people who like your specific art style. So yeah. it also opens up a lot of a lot more possibilities because uh, people do get jobs. Uh, or commissions to do their own personal work. Mm-hmm. For example, Rika, she does a lot of personal work and people commissions her to exactly. do her own original character, which is, I think, really yes. awesome these days because I'm not sure you can do that just even just a few years back because mm-hmm. things like Patreon and yeah, a lot of social media basically empowers mm-hmm. creators to do their to do more of their own style. Exactly. And that's actually what I really admire about Rika as an artist is that she, well, now that she's just said it in the chat where she was wondering if she was the only person left in the world kind of thing. Oh, maybe I read that question, uh, that answer differently. But what I'm saying is that what I really love about her art is that she seems to have that confidence to just create whatever she wants, no matter how different it is from the trends of the industry and i think 
that really defines her artwork with her own unique voice. And I think mm. that's really the soul of an artist is to just create just for this joy of it without being distracted by what other people expect of you. I think we can read some of the chats. Uh, there's some really interesting discussions there. Yeah. So yeah, uh, for sure. one of the comments is from Carter. He says, uh, imagine you're making something you hate and Craig Mullins liked it. Bam. Mm -hmm. Now you feel like you need to keep making that thing you hate to keep up with Mullins' expectation. <laughs> exactly. Because you want to impress yeah. your heroes, right? Yeah. That would be tough. And then, and then iconic phrase says, social media is also a lot about being propped up. If one big artist retweets someone who's capable but unpopular, that can easily get that person into the spotlight. That's also very true. I've had, I've actually had that happen to me uh, once before. So <laughs> I can say yeah. that from my own experience. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange thing, honestly. Sometimes all you need is just the approval from one person yeah. and their clout just yeah. rubs off on you. And, and this then, is an interesting question from Mario, Yes. which is how do you know that your exploration is working and you're not just wasting your time? I think that's definitely a tricky and, question. And then he says, I mean, when it comes to finding your style. Mm. And in my opinion, I think it is, it depends. First of all, what is your purpose in the industry? If it is to actually work in the industry as a, professional concept artist, then most likely mm -hmm. you're going to have to separate that pursuit through, uh, you pursue your personal art through personal work, but then you have to have some skill set in order to meet the needs of the industry. But mm -hmm. personal work should be your grounds where you can experiment and just do whatever the hell you want until someone pays enough attention to you for that. How do you know that your exploration is working? I think it just comes, uh, to answer the, the question directly, I think it just comes with time and experience, yeah. personally, because I've only recently uh, been exploring my own style myself. And maybe just like a few months ago, I discovered that I like a simpler and minimalistic kind of painting style. After years of trying, of, uh, of trying photo bashing and doing this kind of, uh, simulation of old masters style. And yeah, it's something that I discover along my journey. So I don't think you should worry about, uh, yeah. worry too much about finding your own style in such a short amount of time. Just go along and then you'll find it eventually, I feel. Yeah. I do think that the artistic journey is one of a lifetime and some people find their voices earlier and some lighter, um, <laughs> lighter, <laughs> much later. And on a, just on a final note, based on what Tyler mm -hmm. has said with, uh, photo bashing and industry trends, I think we all are quite aware at one point that art station had been filled with so many last of us clones or images <laughs> done in the style of last of us. And everyone was just doing post-apocalyptic with 3D or DAS and whatever the hell it is that pe people at Naughty Dog were using. And I get it. It's so damn awesome. I fell into that trap too. Not to say with great results, but I did. Because I felt like I wanted to stay relevant. But at the same time, who wouldn't want to do kick-ass artwork like the guys at Naughty Dog? But... That's one of those instances where it might distract someone who has no fundamentals to get into photo bashing and 3D and end up just being swept up by the trends and without a proper leg to stand on. So, so I think it's also time that we move on to the next question as well, on. since we've spent quite a while on this one. And we'll but get to it's great all that the you guys are. Yes. And I was going to say, it's great that you guys are discussing it along with us. And we really love that. So keep yes. commenting and posting what your thoughts are. Yeah, we'll do our question. best to get to all of them. But we'll just move on to the next to the question next right now, just to keep the podcast moving. 